given y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, I want to prove that the maximum or minimum occurs at x equals negative b over 2a. The way I'm going to do this is by completing the square. So the first step in completing the square is always making sure the coefficient is 1. So we're going to factor out this a. So that's a, and then we're going to have x squared plus, well, I want to multiply a with something to get b. Well, that something better be b over a. So we have b over a, x. And here, I don't really care about c, so I'm just going to move it to the side. At this step, we're going to add another term. So the key here is to take the middle term, so take this b over a, divide it by 2, and square it. So b over a divided by 2 is b over 2a. Now squaring it will be b squared over 4a squared. Okay, so we're going to put that inside the parentheses. Okay, so we have x squared plus b over 8x. Now add in the new term, b squared over 4a squared. We still have c, but at this point, we need to add, or we need to subtract what we just added. And this is the tricky step. So a lot of students here would say, okay, well, we added b squared over 4a squared. But the truth is, the b squared over 4a squared is being multiplied by the a. So really, we added a times b squared over 4a squared. So that's b squared over 4a. So that's what we added, which means we want to subtract it. Otherwise, we would change the equation completely. Now the next step is to factor. So I have y equals a. Now this thing should factor as x plus b over 2a, quantity squared, plus c minus b squared over 4a. Okay. So we're almost done. And here's what we have to do. We want to show that the max or the minimum occurs at opposite b over 2a. So let's say if a is greater than 0. Well, let's start off with x plus b over 2a quantity squared. We know that's obviously going to be greater than or equal to 0 because anything squared is greater than or equal to 0. If I multiply by a positive number both sides, let's say a, I get this, and then I'm going to add both sides, uh, c minus b squared over 4a. Okay, so what we showed here is that our equation is always greater than or equal to a value. So let's say, for example, c minus b squared over 4a, let's say it's somewhere up here. My parabola is always going to be bigger than or equal to this value. So let's say it looks something like that. Well, clearly, that's a minimum. So, well, where's the minimum? Okay. Well, what we have here is the y value is c minus b squared over 4a. Well, what's the x value? So here I'm going to rewrite it. Well, notice that this is in the form of uh, is in the vertex form. This is your y. This is your x. So x has to be negative b over 2a. So that's assuming that a is positive. What if a is negative? What do we get there? So if we let a be negative, 
for us we have a times x plus b over 2a quantity squared plus c minus b squared over 4a. Let's look at x plus b over 2a quantity squared. This is always going to be greater than or equal to 0 since it's anything squared is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, now let's multiply it by a negative number a. So if I multiply both sides by a, the inequality flips and becomes zero. So whenever you multiply or divide by negative, the inequality flips. The next step, we're going to add the c minus b squared over 4a to both sides. And notice here, my y is always less than or equal to a certain value. That means it cannot exceed it. So let's say opposite of b over 2a is somewhere here. c minus b squared over 4a, let's say, is here. We know that this is the maximum. It's always less than or equal to this. So it would have to look like this. Thus, this is a maximum. So in both examples, when a was positive and a was negative, x equals opposite of b over 2a was a point of either maximum or minimum. And also notice, I didn't mention a equals 0. Because when a equals 0, you don't have a quadratic. And this completes the proof.